A lot of people today are taking apple cider vinegar. And sometimes when I ask them, why are you taking that? And they go like, well, mm, I don't know. Well, I've seen on the on social media that it's useful for a lot of things. And I go like, hmm, okay, like what? Oh, well, you know, um, to, uh, you know, no, to clean uh, and just to get, um, to, you know. And people go for apple cider vinegar and say it's good for your eyes, for your brain, for dementia, for your heart, for heart disease, for diabetes, for losing weight, for your intestine, for your skin, for a lot of things. And people really don't know what's really behind apple cider vinegar. I've been seeing thousands of patients in the years that I've been in practice and I've seen maybe I don't know maybe 10,000 patients in my practice and after seeing all these patients and after treating a lot of chronic conditions I want to tell you about two specific conditions in which apple cider vinegar really really is a rock star it works as a miracle it really aids and help health in this two conditions so before we continue with this video please remember guys that the best way that you can support us is very easy we want to build a community in english as the big one that we have in spanish we have over two million followers in spanish really want to be sharing with you as well we're putting in a lot of effort and we want to do it the best way that we can so the best way is just remember to share the video hit the like button subscribing to the channel, clicking the bell so we can tell you that we make new videos and you're going to be notified. So let's continue. And I'm going to talk to you again, the two things that I think apple cider vinegar is the best for your health. So the first one is, and you're going to find a lot of evidence and a lot of people talking about it, is for everything related with all this metabolic problems. Why? Because Apple cider vinegar has shown in several studies that when you take it before, during, or even after meals, it's going to help you that the glucose spike after that meal could be lower. Apple cider vinegar has a very specific particle that's called acetic acid. We need to remember that the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning of people being overweighted, getting high triglycerides, fatty liver, everything comes from the start of insulin resistance. And when we start before getting insulin resistance, we start making high glucose spikes and high insulin spikes because of our diet, because of our stress, because of our microbiota, but of course, because of what we eat. And if every time that I eat, I get a very high glucose spike and I get a very high insulin spike, that's going to start in causing chronic inflammation. That's going to start inflaming also the receptor for insulin is going to start making the body have to produce or to get a lot of glucose and, and everything's going to come inside of our cells. And once we have that, once we start having insulin resistance, then the problem really, really starts to go everywhere. So you get high triglycerides, you get fat inside your muscle, you, you get fat around your organs, you start having cravings for food, and then you, glucose is going to start climbing and climbing and climbing and everything going to go wrong. So when we take apple cider vinegar, it's something that really is going to help you. And I've seen it with a ton of patients. I've seen it myself when I used a glucose monitor just to check if it was true. Now the question, if I take apple cider vinegar and I'm going to be cured from anything that I have, of course not. Is it going to cure my diabetes? Nope. Am I gonna lose weight just by ingesting apple cider vinegar? No. Nope. It needs to come with a good diet regimen. It needs to come with exercise. It needs to come with sleeping. Maybe if you need a medication, you need a medication. If you need another supplement, you need another supplement. But for sure, it's going to help you as a part of everything else. Now, number two, with this one, now we're going deep into pseudoscience. What I'm going to talk to you about, you're not gonna, gonna find any study about what I'm gonna talk to you about. I'm just going to talk about my experience. And I'm going to talk to you about my experience after treating thousands of patients. Number two is to help fixing a bad stomach. And why? Let's remember the stomach physiology. If you go and type in Google, normal gastric pH. It's between 1.5 and 3. Actually, it's between 1 and 2. But if you want to get this one, I'll get it. Remember that pH goes from 1 to 14 and everything that it's acidic goes from 1 to 6.9. The closer it gets to 1, it's more acidic. The closer it gets to 7, it goes more neutral. And after 7 and going upward, it's everything basic. We need to have an acidic stomach always in between one and two. What happens with life? 
We start with because we have a bad diet, because we're chronically stressed, because we have all the lifestyle that we have today, we start losing the ability and the capacity of producing good amounts of acid. But especially because our nervous system is not capable of stimulating right the stomach in order so we can produce the right amount of mucus to protect the, the tissue underneath and the acid that is going to be on top. When we lose the mucus that it's underneath, then the acid is going to be in direct contact with the walls of the stomach. That's why it hurts. And the solution is not getting just rid of the, of the acid by drinking or by taking medications that are going to quit the production of acid and that are going to bring my stomach to a basic state. And this is what this medication such as omeprazole or ranitidine or any other of these do or any other anti-acid. That's why they have this word anti-acid. They cut the production of acid through different mechanisms. What can we do? What we need to do is we need to recover the function of the stomach. How do we do that? Recovering the acid. Recovering the connection between the brain and the whole gastrointestinal system, but especially the stomach. When someone that has an endoscopy, that doesn't have an ulcer, because the first thing you need to check is that you don't have an ulcer. When we check on someone and we know for sure that it, they don't have an ulcer, that they are not bleeding, and if you want to recover your stomach, what can you do? Are you going to take apple cider vinegar just as it is? No, because you're gonna, it, it's gonna burn and it's gonna hurt. You can put it in water and you can start by small quantities, the ones that you tolerate, and you can start then just putting a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more, but just dilute it. Get a liter of water and you start taking a little sips during the day. What is it going to do? It's going to increase the amount of acid that you have in your stomach. It's going to be doing it slowly. When you have a good amount of acid, you're going to start producing mucus again to protect the gastric tissue underneath. And when you get that, the lower esophageal sphincter is going to start having tone again and closing. So you don't even have GERD. You don't have reflux. You can take that for a while. There are things that can aid this process, such as drinking lemon as well, or such as uh, taking betaine hydrochloride. For some people, it's very helpful. If you think on taking betaine, please go and talk to your physician and talk to a physician that really knows how to recover the function of the stomach. A lot of people are going to tell you this is not true because there is no data. Again, there is no data at all showing that this works, but it makes a lot of sense. And I've seen in hundreds of patients that I have helped, including myself, to treat my stomach. I used to take a Ramprosol for 14 years. And how did I quit? With this apple cider vinegar, lemon water. If you haven't seen the video of lemon water, I'll leave it here. And if you really want to go deeper learning about your stomach and how to treat it and how to recover the normal function, please go and check this video as well. And something that you can do too. Again, in a very responsible way. Again, it's not the only thing that is going to cure anything, but when you do it in, if it's for gastritis or, it, or it's for insulin resistance as a part of the treatment, it's really going to work very well. Before we leave, please remember that the best way to support it is very easy just to Share the video, hit the like button, remember to subscribe, hit the bell. So every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to get notified. See you until next time.